वेदमहे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वरय धीमहि तन्नो गुरुः प्रचोदयते ओम ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद के गुरु महाराज के जय last week we introduced the concept of yoga nidra the psychic sleep of the yogis and we went into a very detailed understanding of this unique practice a practice that enables us to connect our individuality with the universality and i pointed out that though one of the benefits of yoga nidra is deep relaxation yoga nidra is not just another relaxation technique and that yoga nidra is the effort we make to experience the state of sushupti without having to sleep for it and the ancient yogis the great maharishis they were very good at this type of thing because they were excellent simulation experts the word simulation has become very popular especially in medical education where we want to simulate so many things so that we don't have to actually have a live person to demonstrate for example cardio pulmonary resuscitation you have a mannequin and you can do it you simulate the situation of different surgeries and all people who are training to fly go through flight simulation people going out into space experience what the no gravity zero gravity is by simulation so simulation is an attempt to experience something without having to actually go through it and the yogis were great simulators all the yoga techniques are actually simulation techniques and i always remind people shavasana is the ultimate relaxation death is the ultimate relaxation where you let go of everything and the yogi said we want to experience that state of death but we don't want to die because nobody who died came back to tell you what it was like so they said we don't want to die for it so without dying we want to experience death and that is why shavasana came into existence every night when we sleep we go through cycles of different patterns of the sleep wake cycle and we go through what is called rem and non rem rapid eye movement and non rapid eye movement the rapid eye movement is the swapna the dream part the non rem is the sushupti part and that is the deep sleep which is regenerative recuperative and helps the anabolic build up because the catabolic breakdown is the lowest at that point in that state of sushupti it is said that we are one with the cosmos we connect to the cosmos in the state of sushupti but the issue was the sushupti occurs while you are asleep so the experience of oneness with the universe is a passive subconscious unconscious experience and the great yogi said we want to experience it consciously while we are awake hence yoga nidra got created <laughs> and the purpose of this yoga nidra is to help us experience the oneness with the cosmos 
the great siddhas of south india sattamuni siddha he says andathil ullade pindam pindathil ullade andam andathil ullade pindam pindathil ullade andam andamum pindamum onre andamum pindamum onre arindu taan paakum podu arindu taan paakum podu andathil ullade pindam pindathil ullade andam அண்டமும் பிண்டமும் ஒன்றே அறிந்து தான் பார்க்கும் போது அறிந்து தான் பார்க்கும் போது தி அண்டம் அண்ட சராச்சர அண்ட் த பிண்ட தட் வி ஆர் த இண்டிவிஜுவாலிட்டி தி அண்டம் விச் இஸ் த காஸ்மோஸ் அண்ட் த பிண்டம் விச் இஸ் அஸ் the macrocosm and the microcosm are one and the same what is in the macrocosm is in the micro what is in the micro is in the macro so yoga nidra is the attempt by the yogis for us to experience the oneness with the universe without having to go to deep sleep where you don't remember when you get up in the morning as adi shankara reminds us in that shushupta shushupta nirastat shunyatma katva tadeko vashishta shiva kevaloham we experience that highest state of shiva consciousness all that remains the only residue when everything has been negated is that beautiful consciousness called ishvara in the yogic perspective shiva in the shaivite perspective so the yoga nidra we have seen last saturday in our scintillating saturday was a technique created for this purpose not as just another relaxation practice and in this we have seen how we use the concentric circular spiraling and we base it at the nabhi chakra the nabhi chakra which is the navel center the umbilical cord psychic umbilical cord connecting us with the mother universe so you need to be connected if you want to experience the mother universe you have to be connected if the baby and the mother are to have a relationship in the womb they need the physical umbilical cord if you have to relate with the cosmic mother you need the psychic umbilical cord that is the manipura chakra where the samana prana vayu the prana vayu called samana vayu we are going to be looking at all of these in an upcoming course i am preparing online which will detail the yogic psycho neurology the psychic neurology rather and this is about all the concepts of the chakras the nadis the vayus to dwadasha kramas that are based on the sapta dhatus and the connection of us as an individual with the a universe through the tatva 25 tatva principle so many things will come in that we are connecting we are connecting to that subtlest aspect because from the gross we need to connect through the subtle to the causal sthula has to connect to the karana through the sukshma sthula cannot connect to the karana straight away because they are dimensions apart bhu and swa need a bhuva in between between bhu loka and swa loka swarga eh? between bhu loka karma bhumi this earth this existence and that heavenly existence of swa you have the bhuva eh? which is said to be in the purusha suktam eh? which talks about how from the eyes come the sun from the uh, mind comes the moon the connection it talks about this from the navel center 
comes the space. Nabhyam, Nabhya, Nabhya. Remember Nabhi Chakra in Patanjali's teachings? Vibhutipada. Nabhyam Asi Antaviksham. Nabhyam Asi Antaviksham. That Antaviksha. That space that lies between the Bhu and the Swa. Bhu, Bhuva, Swa. When we talk about the Vyahartis in the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhu, Om Bhuvaha. Om Swaha, Om Mahaha, Om Janaha, Om Tapaha, Om Satyam, Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Dio Yona Prachodayati, Om Apo Raso Amritam, Burbo Vasubarum. The connection of all of these concepts. Nabhya Asi Antariksham. So that is why in the Yoga Nidra as taught by Swamiji in this Gita Nanda tradition, we utilize this connection that we have with the psychic umbilical cord. And last week we saw how we bring our awareness here. Now in order to prepare for this, Swamiji has suggested you could do the Anuloma Viloma Prakriya. We have seen that in the 108 day sessions, the Polarity Kriya. Where as you breathe in, you visualize, you experience, you actualize. Eh? As you breathe in, you actualize the prana, golden, warm golden prana coming from the top of the head down to the feet. And as you breathe out, the cool silvery apana coming up from the feet through the body and up and out the top of the head. It is the balance of the ha and the ta, the two polarities, dvandvas. The prana and the apana. So as you breathe in, the prana coming. Huh? Prana coming in, golden, warm, golden prana coming down. And as you breathe out, cool, silvery apana. Cool, silvery apana. And that this concept of balancing, what you are doing, prana coming down, apana going up. And you are creating a beautiful energy balance at the navel center. That is why the anuloma viloma prakriya. Don't confuse it with the alternate nostril that people do, calling it Anuloma Viloma. That's different. Anuloma Viloma Prakriya is a Jnana Yoga Prakriya. It is a higher Kriya that utilizes the higher mind, the Jnana, by choice, the power of choice. Remember the superpower of being human is the power of choice. You are choosing that as you breathe in, a beautiful actualization of the pranic flow coming in the top of the head, down to the feet and as you breathe out the cool silvery apana coming from the bottom of the feet up to the body out the top of the head and when you repeat this and it is Gita Nanda tradition so Savitri Pranayama <laughs> any of these practices you lie down in Shavasana and Gita Nanda tradition immediately it means you start breathing Savitri it is, it is sort of a taken huh? And yesterday I shared a historical research paper from 1980 of uh, work done in the 1980. It was actually work done in the late 70s, got published in 1981, I believe. And I shared of Savitri Pranayama in Shavasana. That was work done by Swamiji, uh, all of his students in the six-month course. They used to go to Jipma for this study. And uh, Professor Madan Mohanji, and uh, the team there at the physiology department. Beautiful experiment on oxygen consumption uh, in uh, Savitri Pranayama and Shavasana. How when you add the Savitri Pranayama to the Shavasana, you reduce the basal oxygen consumption, which means your basal metabolic rate is going down. You don't require so much energy to function. It, it is like, you know, in many vehicles, including my scooter, uh, what happens is in my scooter that uh, if I am driving at a certain speed, it shows green. It is the energy economical mode. And if I go a little faster, it goes to the orange or the red, which says you are utilizing too much energy for the same uh, purpose. Most of the time, we human beings are overusing energy. And so then we burn ourselves out. We don't have energy for what we need to do because we have used the energy in everything we don't need to do. Here what is happening is you are conserving the energy. 
a very beautiful concept of conserving the energy so that it can be utilized in the way it is to be utilized. Right useness is what yoga is all about. The right use of the body, the right use of the emotions, the right use of the mind, the right use of your own body, mind, emotion, spirit, whatever it be. And how do you know whether it's right or not? <laughs> Prefrontal cortex, the neocortex, your unicorn horn. So coming back, when we do the Shavasana, we lie down with the Shavasana and the head is in the north. Now, people are always scared and I keep on repeating this, but I always get a question from someone. Oh, people say, don't put your head in the north. People say, don't put your head in the north because they are scared that their head will be lost. Hmm? And you say, what does that mean? Well, the story goes when Ganesha was given his elephant head, Shiva had cut off the uh, normal uh, looking Ganesha's head. He didn't know it was his own son because Parvati had created Ganesha. And so Shiva and Ganesha got into this fight and Shiva cuts off Ganesha's head. And then Parvati says, you get my son back to life. Otherwise, you know, you are in trouble, guy. You know what women tell the husband? Yes, like that. And so Shiva is like this. He's like, what to do? So he sends out his army of Ganas and Nandi. And they, he says, go and find the first creature that is lying down with the head to the north. Uh, and so they, the first creature they find with the head lying to the north is an elephant. So that elephant's head gets cut off and put on Ganesha. Huh? So people are like, oh my God, if I lie with my head to the north, my head will be cut off. And I'm like, do you realize that elephant, which was a mere elephant, huh? that mere elephant suddenly has become Ganesha. I think it's an amazing uh, upgradation of your job profile. Huh? Your job profile just got a rocket boost from being a simple elephant in the forest to being Ganesha who is worshipped by the whole universe. I, I think, you know, I, any day I would take that, okay? The second reason they say don't put your head to the north is your feet are facing south. And who is in the south? The Dik Palaka. Each of the directions, the eight cardinal uh, directions, north, south, east, west, and the in-between, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. These eight are protected by certain energies. They are called the Dik Palaka. Dik means the direction. Palaka means the protector. Many people say Dik Balaka as if they are babies. They are Palaka. Palaka Palaya. Paripalayam. Paripalayam. Paripalaya. Raghuramam. Palaya. Palayamam. Paripalayamam. Adi Shakti Palayamam. Palaya means to protect. They are the Dik Palakas, Ashta Dik Palakas, the eight protectors of the eight cardinal directions. And for south, you have Yama. So they say, if I put my feet to south, I'll be placing my feet towards Yama. And in Indian culture, you don't put your foot towards anybody unless you want to disrespect them. Putting your feet and showing your feet to somebody is disrespecting that person in Indian culture. Hmm? And there's a story of a very prominent Indian politician when she was Prime Minister of India and someone was sitting with the feet up against her and she put that guy in jail for a day to teach him a lesson. Uh, it was a journalist uh, during emergency. Anyway, a lot of stuff happened in those days. So they say, don't put your feet facing south because then you are putting your feet to Yama and he'll get angry and take you soon. Now my... Logic here is, in the north is Guru Dakshinamurti. The aspect of Shiva who is the teaching principle. Hmm? Purvesham api guru kale nana vache dat as Patanjali tells us so beautifully in the Yoga Darshana. Dakshinamurti with his chin mudra. Mauna vyakya pragadida para Pramadatvam yuvana Varshishta devasad Vishiganai avadvam brahmanishtai Acharyendram karakalita Chinmudhananda rupam Swadmaramam mudita vadanam Dakshina Murti Mide Dakshina Murti 
ಚಿನ್ಮುಧ್ವಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತಿ ಮೌನ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯ ಪ್ರಗತಿದ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತತ್ವ ಯುವಾಣ ವಶಿಷ್ಠಾಂಧೇಹ ಸದೃಶಿಗಣೈರಾವತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿಷ್ಠೈ ಆಚಾರ್ಯೇಂದ್ರಂ ಕರಕಲಿತ ಚಿನ್ಮುಧ್ವಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತಿ ಚಿನ್ಮುಧ್ವಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತಿ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಾರಾಮ ಮುರಿತ ವದನ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ದಟ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಶಿವ ವಿತ್ ಚಿನ್ಮುಧ್ವ ಆನಂದಮೂರ್ತಿ ಮೌನ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯ ವಿತ್ ಮುದಿತ ವದನ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೌತ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಮೈ ಫೀಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಗುರು ಗೋ ಜಂಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೆಲ್ ಐ ಡು ರಾಧ ಪೀ ಕೀಪ್ ಮೈ ಫೀಟ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಡೆತ್ ದೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಮೈ ಫೀಟ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗುರು people do not realize the connotations they say oh only a dead body is placed with the head to the north and feet to the south yes what the hell is shavasana dead body posture not the monkey and not the donkey and not the peacock it is a simulation technique for you to simulate what the death experience is so the first part is put yourself in a position that looks like a dead body people people have no common sense just lying down in any direction is not shavasana just lying down in any way you want is not shavasana if you want to make a pizza there is a recipe for it if you follow the recipe that makes ice cream you will not get a pizza for god's sake common sense but in yoga people i don't know suddenly they lose that common sense they become nonsense so much of nonsense in the field of yoga because of this yoga removed from its root has become nonsense plastic yoga or as kaustub said yesterday barbie doll yoga we already had a jada yoga which is dead yoga jada yoga barbie doll yoga plastic yoga when you lie down in shavasana we place the head in the north the feet in the south because we are a small magnet an electromagnetic energy and we are in the grand electromagnetic energy of the planet earth mother earth respect her be grateful to her worship her have reverence for her protect her and what do we do we hum <laughs> thank you rudy for that bubble gum yoga i love that all just bubbles huh? mother earth respect her support her now mother earth has this electromagnetic flux and there is this beautiful energy with the north pole and the south pole so it's like a huge magnet very huge magnet okay and we are like a tiny magnet now when you take a big magnet and you put any small magnet it comes into the field of the big magnet the small magnet will align itself to the same direction of electromagnetic flux as the big magnet i hope you get it the big magnet is earth we are the small magnet the moment we are in that flux yes we are in earth's electromagnetic flux whether you like it or not otherwise take that one way trip to mars or even go to pluto if you want or venus if we are in this electromagnetic flux automatically we must align ourselves to it we must harmonize with it So when you lie down with your head to the north and feet to the south you are aligning with the electromagnetic flux because again remember in the Gita Nanda tradition everything is about energy not just physical relaxation physical relaxation can be done by lying in any direction with your feet sprawled apart hands apart and doing whatever you want physical relaxation but physical relaxation does not conserve energy when you lie down in shavasana north to south 
and you start doing the Savitri Pranayama, you become an energy efficient human being. You go into a wakeful, hypometabolic state. Now sleep, deep sleep, as I said, Shushupti, non-REM sleep is a hypometabolic state. That is why animals during winter hibernate. They go into that state. When they go into that state, what they do is they reduce the metabolic needs. They become energy efficient and last the whole winter. But they go to sleep for it. Here it is wakeful. That is why it is a wakeful hypometabolic state that you are going into in these practices. And that is why, yes, mugs, normally what we do is that when we place an altar, we would like that the rising sun, the energy of the rising sun should come and hit that deity in the morning. This is the ideal. So most of the Indian temples, unless there is some other specialized reason, which is called a Visheshya. I remember going to a temple in Andhra Pradesh near Visagapatnam with my father-in-law. Uh, after Devasana and I got married, we visited Visagapatnam where her brothers uh, pundit in a very nice Ganesha temple. And so we went to visit a place called Simachalam. And this is a very beautiful temple. And this temple faces the other direction. And so I remember my father-in-law telling me, he said, this is a very special temple because it faces the other direction. And I thought in my mind, if I were to build a temple in the opposite direction, you would criticize me saying, Ananda, you are doing it wrong. But when somebody else has done it, you say it is special. I never forget these beautiful conversations I had with Devasena's father, a very beautiful human being, very wonderful soul, very wonderful soul. Whenever we place a deity, and that is why the gurus in our tradition, when they are placed in Maha Samadhi, they are placed in Padmasana, sitting in the Samadhi, the grave, facing to the east. And the idea is that as the morning sun comes up in Indian culture, it is the rising sun, not the setting sun. That's why the auspicious swastika implies a rising sun. The one that Hitler chose was the setting sun. And he gave a bad name to a very auspicious symbol of the self. Swa Astika. That one which is manifesting the essence of the self. And it should be the rising sun. And that is why whenever we place a shrine, we place so that the early morning light, as the sun rises, the rays of light. In Kamli Swami Madam, in the morning as the sun comes up, the rays of light will come and hit the lingam over Kamli Swami again. This is part of the architectural design that is there. If it is related to the Guru Sthana, Dakshinamurti and the Guru, they will be sitting in the north facing the south. So the student sits in the south facing the north, the Guru sits in the north facing the south and the energy moves from the north to the south pole. There is this beautiful energy current that is created. Swamiji used to say for any practice, if you were sitting for the practice to face north for the same reason, except in the early morning when the sun is rising and you can face east. The other option is that when you are sleeping, your head can be to the east. East is a good direction for the sleeping in that way because it is harmonious with the flow. I am talking about the yogic relaxation, not necessarily sleep. That's a separate piece. Coming back to Yoga Nidra. We are lying down in Shavasana, head to the north, feet to the south. We are performing Savitri Pranayama. A couple of rounds of the Anuloma Viloma Prakriya so that the prana coming in from the top of the head to the feet, the apana from the feet to the head. And then we start to center in the navel center. The navel, Nabi. And a pinpoint, a pinpoint, a bindu, a pinpoint at the navel center, Nabi Chakra. And then clockwise we are going, circling outward, step by step. Hmm? The first is the top of a thimble. People said, what is a thimble? Well, for those who are not used to it, when you do sewing, you put a protector over your finger. 
So it's a small protector over the finger, like a finger cap. Finger cap. You start, so the point becomes a little bigger, little bigger, little bigger. So the top of a thimble, then the rim of a teacup, then so that it's as big as a dinner plate, then coming, expanding, expanding until finally we came to a point six inches above the top of the head, six inches below the bottom of the feet, the heels. And at this point, we hold it for a few moments. And then we start to retrace. Retracing back from the bigger circle, coming down, coming down, until we come back to the navel point. And then tightening that like you are tightening a screw into wood. Huh? So that you are re-establishing your individuality. But your individuality that is being re-established re now encompasses this beautiful Amazing scope of the universe itself. The amazing scope of the whole universe comes into that. So, in this practice, and then you go into the deepest state. Now, this is the basic practice. When this is expanded, this practice is expanded, you can take it to an awareness of the multiple kosha levels. And you start to then expand this energy. When you're expanding the energy and contracting it, you experience it through the Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vigyanamaya and Anandamaya. You can also start to keep in mind the energies of the chakras. They can also be brought into it. So this becomes the base practice on which then you can add. It's like you have the basic structure and you can start coloring it, painting it, dressing it up are decorating it, all that can be done. The basic practice is the foundation. And here the whole concept is of expanding the consciousness. You are wakeful. So it is expanding the consciousness from the individuality at the navel center, which is the seat of the jiva. Hmm? The navel center is the seat of the jiva. In fact, in many of the laya kriyas, when we do the laya kriyas in the Gitananda tradition, the charging of the navel center is one of the very important ones. Which is why in so many martial arts, uh, you find that the martial arts, they use the sound of the ha. The ha is the navel sound. Ha, 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 ha. And that is why a good preparation for understanding this is to place the hands on the abdomen and just go ha, 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 ha. It's a very good practice, the haka, making the ha sound. Sounds like the Maoris down in New Zealand. and They have a haka also. Hmm? Ha! And this is the navel center. And that is why so many of the martial arts understood that this has to be charged. This navel center has to be strong. Because if this is not strong, uh, it's going to be very tough. And yes, as uh, Divya is pointing out, I had put out this uh, Yoga Nidra video, it's actually an audio where I have guided this whole practice for those who want to play it and practice at home. Um, the question of Anita regarding Savitri Pranayama, I have dealt extensively with it, but it is just to update people where you breathe in for, say you breathe in for eight counts, you hold for four, breathe out for eight, hold for four. So here the in and out are equal. Held in, held out are half the rate. 2, 1, 2, 1 is the pattern of Savitri. And we have done extensive sessions. You can look at them on YouTube um, during my 108 day sessions. Savitri is the basis of all the practices that we are doing. Coming back. Let us go through a short session of this Yoga Nidra. So I welcome you wherever you are to lie down. Um, stretching out your feet and lying down. Try to find out which is north so that your head is in the north and your feet are in the south. Uh, remember that you want the heels to be together. Again, many people, they take Shavasana with the legs apart. 
which is a good physical relaxer. But here in Shavasana and Gita and other tradition, we want to conserve the energy. We want to create a closed circuit of energy. So when you lie down with your heels together, it's not the whole feet together, but the four feet are apart, the heels are together and the, the four feet, the toes fall into a V shape. Keep the heels at least as close together as possible because then the energy will sort of be in a nice closed circuit. Hands by the side and uh, once you have taken up this lying down position, start to settle into yourself. Settling into yourself in a very beautiful manner and just being aware of your breath as it comes in and out. Being aware of that opportunity we have through the breath to experience, to experience the connection between the universe and us that we experience every time we breathe in and breathe out. Being aware of how you are breathing. Is your breath slow? Is it deep? Is it mindful? The moment you start to think of your breath, your emotions settle down, your mind becomes a bit more clear. Watching the breath is one of the fundamental basis of all contemplative practices. Now slowly start to come into a pattern of the Savitri Pranayama where we are going to be breathing in for six, holding for three, breathing out for six and holding out for three. Breathing out, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, Three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Now visualize the golden, warm, golden prana coming from the top of the head down to the feet as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, visualizing the cool, silvery apana from the feet up to the top of the head. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Letting your mind now settle down into the abdominal region, the navel center. This is a psychic point between your physical umbilicus and the ziphy sternum which is at the bottom of your rib cage, the middle part. There's a beautiful space which is this Nabi Chakra, the navel center. Now at this point, start to be aware, actualize in your consciousness 
a point of energy, a bindu, the seed of the energy experience and start to follow it as this energy starts to move in a circular manner. That pin size energy moving in a clockwise direction. Letting that energy spiral outwards slowly. Creating a circle that is now the size of the top of a cap or the top of a thimble as Swamiji has put it. Clockwise, letting that spiraling move until it is as big as the rim of a teacup, a saucer. Letting that spiraling clockwise from that point outwards until it's as big as a plate. The top of the rib cage, sorry, the bottom of the rib cage at the top. And the pelvic bones, the top of the pelvic bones at the bottom level being your sort of zone for this spiral. Slowly increasing this clockwise spiraling outwards until the top of the circle is at the mid chest region and at the pubis below. Extending it out clockwise, the lower part of the neck and the middle of the thighs, that circle spiraling outwards, growing outwards, until it is now at the chin above and the shin below. The chin to the shin is the perimeter of this circle that you have spiraled out now. Letting it grow millimeter by millimeter, inch by inch as it grows. And now it's at the top, it's at the eyebrows and at the ankles below. And then growing outwards until the top of the head and the soles of the feet. Continue this spiraling, this circular spiraling, clockwise circular spiraling outwards until a point six inches above the head and six inches below the feet. At this point, just stop the spiraling and maintain this point of relaxation. Make sure you are mindful, the intent to stay awake and experience this consciously, wakefully. Keep your mind alert. The power of the Icha Shakti, the willpower, the power that induces a Sankalpa, a positive aspirational statement is used at this point. Just experiencing that beautiful expanded consciousness. You have expanded out from the individuality at the navel and expanded out to reach the cosmos, six inches above the top of the head, six inches below the bottom of the feet, expanding out into the whole universe. The Dvadasha Chakras all manifesting in the glory full consciousness. Enjoy that expanded consciousness, that oneness with the cosmos. And then slowly start to retrace your way back. Now the spiral is coming inward. It is coming backward and it is anti-clockwise. Coming down from the top of the head and the feet below, reversing it so that you are now 
at the eyebrows above and the ankles below. The anti-clockwise reversing of the spiral back through the chin above and the shins below. Coming back, making it smaller as it comes spiraling backwards. The neck, lower neck above and the middle thighs below. Then the mid chest and the pubis. The lower part of the rib cage and the upper part of the pelvic girdle. And then becoming smaller and smaller as you spiral back anti clockwise size of the rim of a saucer, the size of a rim of a teacup, the size of the rim of a bottle cap, the top of a thimble, and now coming back to becoming a singular point, a bindu at the nabi, a bindu at the solar plexus, the navel center. At this point, Let it go tighter and tighter, like a wood screw being turned into soft wood using a screwdriver. Letting the consciousness tighten this point deeper and deeper. Moving through the Ananda Maya, the Vijnana Maya, the Prana Maya, Mano Maya and the Anna Maya. Cosmic centers, the under chakras coming down into the pinda chakras, coming down through the sahasrara, the agnya, the vishuddha, the anahata, the manipura, the swadhisthana into the mulada. From the causal subtle down into the gross and manifesting that universality deep in the individual. At this point, the deepest stage of Yoga Nidra begins. Make a positive statement of purpose to be awake. It is a wakeful state. Have a sankalpa to be mindful of the experience of the universe coming into you and you being empowered by that universe. You, the drop, now have the whole ocean within you. You, the individual, have the whole universe within you. While you are experiencing this state, Enjoy that sense of oneness with the cosmos. Shivoham, 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 Soham, Sachitananda, Swarupoham, Shivoham, 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 Soham. Sachidananda Swarupoham Shivoham 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 Soham Sachidananda Swarupoham Shivoham 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 Soham Sachidananda Swarupoham Shivoham, 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 Soham, Sajidananda, Swarupoham, Sajidananda, Swarupoham, Shivoham, 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 Soham, Sajidananda, Swarupoham, Sajidhananda Swarupoham Shivoham Shivoham 
ஷிபோகம் சச்சிதானந்தோகம் சச்சிதானந்தோகம் ஷிபோகம் 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 சோகம் சச்சிதானந்த ஸ்வரூபோகம் சச்சிதானந்த ஸ்வரூபோகம் சச்சிதானந்த ready gently start to move the fingers if you have difficulty coming back to the sensation a moment mindfully move the little fingers and when you do that you can again bring back the connection between the mind and the body the neuromuscular connection becomes alive again moving the fingers the toes moving the wrists and the ankles the elbows and the knees the hips and shoulders the neck giving yourself a very beautiful stretch a healthy stretch <sighs> slowly starting to turn from side to side and then always coming out of the shavasana lifting your left hand over the head turning to the left side lying on the left side with the right dominant for a few moments when you lie down like this the right nostril flow the surya nadi is activated and the left brain gets the message that says wake up you have to face the day you have to go out and do what you need to do today huh? brings us back to the day to day reality show that we are all part of the non stop reality show and then slowly coming on to your face down position unmukha asana on the face pushing up into the bhujanga coming into the chatushpada the four footed posture if you want to stretch yourself into the shashanga please do that and then coming up slowly to a seated position for a few moments of contemplation Yoga Nidra is one of those amazing practices to help us connect to the universe. The drop connects to the ocean. We start to understand how deeply we are psychically connected to the universe. And the expansion from the individuality to the cosmos and then from the universality to the individuality. So that as you expand you are expanding your consciousness outwards you are growing out of that bottle in which you find yourself but then after having that experience you come back into where you are that is why the panchakosha experience expanding from the annamaya to the pranamaya the manomaya the vigyana and anandamaya and then as you come back anandamaya vigyanamaya manomaya pranamaya annamaya It's a very beautiful experience because what is happening from the gross through the subtle we are going to the causal but then that causal is coming back through the subtle into the gross and when you come out of the yoga nidra you are not just alone anymore because you have had that experience of being all one and the moment we have that experience of being all one with the universe it's an advaita state tad eko as adi shankar reminds us a state where we realize that we are just a drop that has the ocean in us we are the ocean in a drop we are the universe in an individual we are the cosmos in human form and then the vedic mahavakyams that tell us aham brahmasmi 
they become a reality we manifest the divinity to us have a wonderful weekend wherever you are we will continue this scintillating saturdays um every saturday we also have the sunday tell me appa where divya and i are talking about different things and tomorrow we will be talking about um concepts and stories associated with lord brahma uh, the creator and stories to do with brahma will be our topic uh tomorrow today i'm concluding the 14th uh, session of mantra yoga sadhana we started off with 12 sessions and as usual uh, people are getting a bonus from ananda because ananda is not able to stop talking and uh, so we have 14 sessions and after a gap of a week uh, we will be starting the yogic psychic neurology course and in that course we are going to be looking at all of these concepts the subtle aspects of yoga that's why we called it psychic neurology and we'll be talking about basis of sapta dhatus being expanded to navadushya and then the dwadasha krama which is an understanding of who we are as an individual within the energy aspect we are going to be looking at concepts of the pancha bim shati that 25 tattvas starting with purusha and prakriti coming down to the pancha mahabhuta we are going to be talking about nadis we are going to be talking about chakras we are going to be talking about um, the dwadasha pranas the dwadasha pranas which are the energies that make us who we are the pancha pranavayu pancha upapranavayu and the two para pranavayu that are unique to swamiji's teachings we'll be looking at what are the jnana indriyas what are the karma indriyas how are all of these interconnected and i uh, the gunas the doshas i think you know all these concepts which are so important if you ask me as a yoga practitioner as a yoga teacher or someone who tries to share what i have of yoga a conduit for the teachings and as a yoga therapist who tries to help people heal themselves empower the individual to heal themselves these concepts are very important these are more important than what is taught in so many yoga courses of modern medical anatomy and physiology and psychology and all this i am not against it but those are add ons i think the primary aspect as i often say 200 hours of yoga should have 200 hours of yoga and then additional hours of other things 500 hours of yoga should have 500 hours of yoga plus other things but if you look at a 200 hour 300 hour 500 hour the amount of yoga is always about 50 or at most 60% of the total duration uh, i think we need to rethink this if we are going to share yoga we should know the yogic principle because it is not about yoga for diabetes or yoga for hypertension oh you need to know about diabetes yes you need to know about diabetes but what is more important is you need to know about the yogic concept of it when an individual comes to you what are the yogic concepts that are applicable and this is the foundation of yoga chikitsa yoga as a therapy this is the foundation of yoga vigyana the science of yoga and most of the time these are being missed and so i felt that we need to share it um i am still thinking about in what format it will be how i will share it but this will be online sessions you can get back to us through the website ananda@icyr.com is the email and i will register you and send you the details as soon as i finalize them and then you know we have the wonderful wednesdays with devasena who sharing bhajans and so many concepts come up from the culture lethos uh, uh, the wonderful wednesdays and then the twinkling thursdays with divya who was uh, just singing so beautifully last last thursday's concert was just so amazing i was i was playing the mrudangam and i was just enjoying myself as that divine music came to her so uh, so many things happening and growing and glowing so be in touch and uh, See you all soon, whenever that is. Om 
Loka samasta sukino babantu sarve janah sukino babantu om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi om